God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, just pray for a fresh anointing upon me, upon each one here, upon this word. Come and do a new work in us, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. So usually when I'm, I'm out in the mornings, early morning uh, walks or even in the evenings, I'll be uh, listening to some talks, sermons, things like that. And a few days ago, this sermon popped up. I mean, someday that I don't hear, I, I subscribe to certain people and I hear them regularly and every now and then I'll share something, you know, because uh, it makes sense to share from what you're being filled with. You know, and so the other day one sermon popped up somebody had never heard before a guy called Alistair Begg he seems to be quite famous and wasn't really my type of sermon but something that he said uh, uh, struck a chord a couple of things I've been thinking about I went back and found I did a full bible study in going deeper on this particular verse so I just put it together and I want to give him credit also for Bollywood says, no, inspired by his sermon. Okay, it's called Make Every Effort and it's from Luke chapter 13, <coughs> verse 22. So it says, then Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. Now I've made a slight alteration in the in the passage, in the punctuation, because there isn't punctuation in the Greek, so you have to decide where the punctuation comes. So in all of our Bibles, it says, you will try, you will try to enter and will not be able to, full stop. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking. I've changed the punctuation because it makes more sense that way. You will try to enter and will not be able to, once the owner of the house shuts the door and later you'll realize the mean the importance of that that change okay so jesus is <coughs> moving around as usual he's doing his ministry he's teaching so he's got things to teach but at the same time we know throughout his ministry people would come and ask him questions and he would use those questions to teach something more or teach something new or repeat something and sometimes that question would be would be exactly the answer that they were looking for. Sometimes he would go completely at a tangent and share something else from that particular question. Okay, and we see that today. Okay, so in this particular passage, someone asked Jesus a question. What is the question? Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? You know, what kind of a question is this? It's a theoretical question. It's a speculative question. It's an intellectual question. It's the kind of question that a lot of people ask. Christians, non-Christians, okay, we're very good at asking these kind of questions like, are we saved by faith or by works? Are nominal Christians saved? Those who go to nominal churches. When I was in a, when I was in Pune in Saint Paul's Church, a CNI church, after the service, we would have people coming to the coffee time and asking us, are you saved? Because they wanted to take us to some charismatic church. So they come outside church itself after the service and ask, are you saved? Okay, then the famous question, what about those who haven't heard about Jesus? Where will they go? And always you talk about the African tribal who's never heard about Jesus. Okay, then what about those who have had a bad experience of Christians? You know, the extreme might be abuse, sexual abuse, but all, all kinds of, they've, they've seen a bad witness of Christians. Okay, what's happening right now in, in our, I guess it's our alma mater for church, our CNI, where 
court cases are going on and bishops are being toppled and whatever you know <coughs> what about those they've seen a bad bad witness why should they believe what about good people of other religions what will happen to them you know who when is the second coming who is the antichrist are these the end days every generation says you know, so all of these are intellectual questions the kind of question he is asking here are only a few people going to be saved what he means by this is that are only the jews going to be saved or will there be any possibility for the gentiles okay because at that point the jews were god's people they were the children of abraham they were the ones who had the revelation of god they were the chosen ones okay and we know that when the church started going to the gentiles there was a big uproar because how can the how can the gentiles also be part of this worshiping the messiah and when they accepted that also it was how can they not be circumcised so all these intellectual issues were there and and this is along the same lines and in our time we have all kinds of intellectual issues we of course go overboard then what kind of worship what kind of this so on and so forth okay so intellectual questions now jesus could have given him a theological intellect and intellectual answer <coughs> he could have answered him in the same vein but he doesn't do that instead jesus turns to the whole crowd not to that man he talks to the whole crowd and he gives them a very practical and a spiritual answer instead of something intellectual okay he is actually not even answering the question he is using it to say something far more important what does jesus say make every effort to enter through the narrow door okay what is jesus saying oh what a nice intellectual question how many are going to be saved he says forget about that what about you that is his answer you don't think about that okay people will be saved how many people will be saved and all these things somebody says what about the african tribe and forget about him what about you that's what jesus would say i'll think about him or if you are really concerned go like david livingston to africa where nobody else went work there for 20 30 years and you get only one convert but you can do that okay people ask intellectual questions because we do we want to avoid the practical so jesus says what about you and he says you make every effort okay so instead of a nice pat theological intellectual answer they get a bomb actually you make every effort now now listen to that word what does that word mean make every effort it's a greek word agony the agony zomai it sounds like agony which is exactly what it is our word agony comes from that jesus in the garden of gethsemane he was in anguish it's the same word okay the exact same word what is jesus saying he's saying you make every effort you agonize it's called it's contending for a prize it's the word later on we will see it paul uses for running a race okay struggling with an adversity who is the adversity you are your inner self is the adversity it is striving as if you are in an athletic contest as if you are in warfare that is the word that is being used it's not try harder it's make every effort it's agonize it's strive like jesus strove in the garden of gethsemane to overcome his own whatever he was feeling it says make every effort okay and immediately the question comes is jesus saying then salvation by works are we saved by our works no no because paul says clearly you know by grace through faith and that to a gift of god okay so he's not talking about salvation by works what is jesus meaning okay the question are only a few going to be saved the question is actually are only a few being saved are only a few being saved it's a continuous process okay so the story is told of a salvation army girl she asked the bishop are you saved and he answers her he says do you mean 
have i been saved from sins penalty am i being saved from sins power or will i be saved from sins presence these are these three you know we know that in the in the christian walk there's something that happens and then continues and there'll be a fulfillment eventually and it's the same with being saved when we come to jesus when we make that initial statement of faith we are saved past tense the technical word would be regeneration we get baptized things like that then we are being saved that's the present the technical word is sanctification where our ourselves are being renewed to become more like jesus and then there's the third one will we be saved one day we will be saved in the sense of the last day and that's called glorification where we will have glorified bodies and sin will no longer sin and everything else i mean so many things that jesus has saved us from we still experience pain hurt sin death all of that all of that will be gone one day okay so that that is that glorification is what god does completely okay but there's something that we have to do for the first two am i saved am i being saved okay and so when that when that when that man asks jesus this question this intellectual question he's speaking like the jews spoke and where they were so proud of their position their status as the chosen ones and they looked down upon the gentiles and it was almost as if because we have this heritage from abraham onward we're okay the same thing is true now of so many christian the danger of the familiarity of religion of cheap grace we're okay because we go to church every sunday or even every day we're okay because we do quiet time we're okay because i'm baptized or confirmed or or speak in tongues or whatever it is jesus says make every effort you see we are saved we think we are saved are we being saved what is happening in the present and jesus says make every effort okay now in two ways we can take this as i said first is have we been saved make every effort to enter that narrow door which means to accept jesus invitation that's that first step but it's also make every effort to grow in jesus you know matthew a similar passage has a narrow door and a narrow path it's not just that the door is narrow and inside oh there's a whole valley you know the the path is also narrow you enter through a narrow door which means there's no other door and in this age of pluralism and all kinds of nonsense that people believe in that many ways to jesus and i mean to god forget about jesus no there's just a narrow door but matthew says there's even a narrow path that word for narrow actually is compressed which means there's pressure on all sides <coughs> to push you off the path but you got to stay on the path and jesus says make every effort to do this that's what we are making every effort for agonizing for striving for that initial that initial hindrance to saying yes to jesus it's by grace through faith but some step we have to take no open the door for example jesus is knocking but even more than that we have to make every effort we have to strive agonize <coughs> to grow in jesus okay paul this is how paul describes his christian walk can i have water please <coughs> okay paul says verse 25 chapter 1 corinthians chapter 9 he says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training that phrase competes in the games is the word agonize strict training 
they do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever therefore now paul is saying this is how i do it this is my agonizing therefore i do not run like a man running aimlessly i do not fight like a man beating the air no i beat my body and make it my slave so that after i preach to others i myself will not be disqualified for the prize he is describing he is describing a christian walk that is the definition of this make every effort you know and the example always before us we see we see these athletes we see these we see these top uh, sportsmen and sportswomen and we marvel at their fitness we marvel at you know but what all they have gone through they have agonized to come to that place and paul is saying and jesus is saying you should be having the same kind of commitment the same kind of passion the same kind of uh, no compromise the same kind of effort put into being saved the christian walk not your salvation the process of being saved of sanctification what are we called to make every effort for what are we called to agonize for to know jesus intimately and uh, i'll just say at this point that later on even in the link i'll put my going deeper message i look at every every uh, time that the word make every effort is used and you'll see this some of these things come out to know jesus intimately to become like him the fruit of the spirit to use our gifts to be passionate for him to seek first his kingdom to surrender fully to step into our calling what we've been talking about to pick up our mantles even to forgive to love to serve to pray to fast to worship all these things we saying you do it every effort make every effort to come to church is something as simple as that you know i won't judge anybody because i don't know why people are not here but jesus would say make every effort in the christian life make every effort for all the things that for example the dna of the church is described as make every effort to grow in the word make every effort to learn how to pray make every effort to uh, to grow in the fellowship make every effort to grow in signs and wonders make every effort to reach out to the lost for everything it's make every effort to the extent of agonizing you know we think we have all the time in the world to get serious about jesus but that's exactly what jesus is addressing here okay that man asked him the question no how, how many will be saved or will only a few be saved he's talking in terms of number jesus says no the limitation is not of number the limitation is of time for each and every person the limitation is of time you may think you have all the time in the world you know that people here today that people online who may think i have all the time in the world to say yes to jesus or i have said yes to jesus i have all the time in the world i'll i'll get serious about him a bit later my gifts my callings my this my that i'll do that a bit later jesus says you may not have time the only limitation is of time okay what is he saying you know once the owner shuts the door there is no time okay what does that shutting the door means yes it means jesus is returning but 2000 years have passed he hasn't returned therefore for each individual it means the time they died now you might not die at 80 you might get banged by a car today then that's the that's the owner shutting the door you see that's the owner shutting the door and maybe you've not even said yes to jesus yet okay there's also the aspect of a seared conscience remember the blasphemy of the holy spirit if you blaspheme against the holy spirit there's no hope for you what is that i don't know but it means your conscience is so seared that the door is shut to making the change that's a very extreme situation but obviously people can get there because jesus says there's a blasphemy against the holy spirit just to be clear if you're worried about it you're not there the person who's got a seared conscience is not even worried about it anymore if just now you're thinking to yourself oh have i blasphemed against the holy spirit you haven't the very fact that you're worried but my point is 
at different in different ways the door can be shut not just to your salvation in terms of going to heaven but in terms to your calling on the earth you know the time they look back and said what all have i missed out on because i didn't say yes to him because i didn't passionately move into the things he called me to what have i missed out on what have i not done for jesus i have knelt and cried and said god and still i'll go back into the same nonsense and suddenly i get convinced say god what i must have not done some of those doors are shut i'm sure and some of those lives are lost probably so he says that you will try you will try and enter you know what that word try means you will seek to enter not the try doesn't mean making effort because that is already we already said you should make every effort they're not making effort anymore they're seeking to enter they're demanding that they enter and one of the meanings of that word is they are investigating issues which tells me that there are people still thinking and debating intellectual issues the door is shut the time is gone imagine all of those and there's such a large group of people even today and they and you they'll you go on youtube and there people i respect and who are so good on so many other issues who are still saying there no gifts the signs and wonders have ceased they will land up in heaven but they sat and investigated and intellectually discussed something that jesus said go and do make every effort to see the things happen that are on his heart okay. thinking debating questioning making excuses finding you know jesus says a teacher who will tickle your ears who will say what they want to hear and in all that time time is running out like noah it's the same picture no when the door closed time ran out for everybody on the earth time ran out and the and the speculation is and it's quite possible what happened is that once the rain started falling and the floods started coming people must have gone and banged on the door quite likely it's not there in the bible but it's too late once the door was shut it was too late okay and i just feel god is saying make every effort because the only limitation to coming to jesus and to growing in jesus and to fulfilling his purposes is time it's not an issue of numbers it's issue of the time each one of us has to fulfill i think of my father there were many prophetic words made about him they were not fulfilled because i think he took so long to say yes to jesus all that happened was he said yes to jesus and died and he was such a gifted man i can't imagine what he would have done if those gifts had been used for jesus but they were not my mother far less gifted used so much used everything she had she was the definition of agonized for god she did things that i will not i could not you young people couldn't do today that she did in her old age even with cancer for jesus so the story is told of the devil sort of ending with this and then i want to show a bit of a clip so the devil has a uh, three apprentice devils come to the devil and they say we're going to go out and ruin people in terms of their desire to respond to the message of salvation so the devil says to the first one how are you planning on doing that the first guy says i'm just going to go out and tell everybody there's no such thing as heaven the devil said that's a silly idea everybody knows in their heart that there's a heaven everybody wants to go to heaven the second guy says well i'm going to tell them that there's no hell the devil says that's not going to work either because people know that bad needs to be punished so somewhere they know that there's a hell into which bad people are going he asked the third one what are you going to do the third apprentice devil said i'm just going to go out and tell everybody there is no hari there is no hari the devil said go and you will ruin them by the millions it's a bit of what jesus is saying make every effort because the time is short once the owner shuts the door 
your time is up whether it is is to say yes to jesus there may be people today or people who will hear this online who have not said yes to jesus even that first step also take that step you don't know when you run out of time but i know that the people i'm speaking to are more in the second category of being saved we've said yes to jesus but are we growing in him are we moving stepping into our callings are we picking up the mantles are we using our gifts all of the things that comprise of the christian walk paul the apostle said i agonize i strive like an athlete in strict training in the christian walk he wasn't laying back and enjoying his life with jesus he was striving he was making every effort and really today that invitation into jesus whether it's that first step or into deeper things into his purposes and what i want to do is i want to just play a clip this is a this is a clip that is from 1995 the brownsville revival and it's not even totally related to this but there's an important point i feel it will make i just want to play the clip and then immediately we'll just have a time of silence and a time of prayer okay where we can respond to what god is saying okay. now folks when you see someone like this <clears throat> and you just make a snap judgment and you see someone doing something like this you may say oh man you know what's going on but i want to tell you this girl she's a brilliant girl her mother's a school teacher her father's a doctor medical doctor and these girls have been raised in brownsville assembly i know their life and they're godly girls but god during this revival has gotten a hold of them and her sister is elizabeth that's given her testimony on television and here on friday night in the church and this is allison and god uses her uh when it comes time for the altar call and things like that he uses her in intercession and you'll see her back there really under the power of the holy spirit beginning to intercede for lost souls and she's never done anything like this i've known her for many years i've known these girls since they were little bitty girls i mean like this i've known them i've been their pastor but i know beyond any doubt whatsoever that these girls are being moved on by god's spirit And Allison, if you can, sweetheart, I want you to take just a moment and just share what the Lord's doing in your life and what's going on. Okay. I can ask the other. I'm 19 years old and um I've been through high school and I'm in college now and at the beginning of this revival I didn't come for the first week. I I was like everyone else. I wasn't so sure about it. And um church had always been kind of a just a requirement anyway. So it was the second Sunday of this revival that I came to the the night service. And um uh Steve preached on um, I have a verse for it. Um In Matthew 6 um 24 it says no one can serve two masters either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other and what Steve preached about that night was you cannot hold on to the hand of God and on to the hand of the world at the same time and uh, all through high school and college I've I've known God well God has had a place in my heart but he didn't really have a place in my life and I never thought that God had anything to offer other than just sitting at church and I'd never given him a chance to do anything in my life so I was constantly running after the world I was running after what I, I thought I had to have something that the world would give me but whenever I heard that what Steve preached I my eyes were open like Steve preached last night um Satan 
he blinds us. And I, I was blinded by worldly things that I thought I had to have and worldly friends that I thought I had to have. And all it took to totally change my life was for me to, to, to listen and, and really hear what these people, these men of God are trying to say, what God is trying to say. You know, the Bible says people, they have ears to hear, but they don't hear what people are trying to say and what God is trying to say to, say to them. And um, I listened that night and God totally opened my eyes. You know, he changed my whole life. I was terribly depressed because I, I had enough of God in me to know what I was doing was wrong and to be miserable doing it. And I was in the most horrible position you can be in. God says himself, he'd rather spit you out of his mouth than have you be lukewarm because you're no good to anybody unless you're hot or cold. So, I'm hot now. <laughs> that happened to me the first week of the revival and, uh, and like they say you don't have to search after the manifestation the manifestation is on me now but it wasn't for a long time I came to lots of meetings and I got prayed for and I never felt anything physically happen but my whole life was transformed and now God has given me the gift of intercession and um, he has, he's allowed me to feel, the Holy Spirit has allowed me to feel just part of the pain that he feels whenever people don't listen to him. I've realized that the Holy Spirit, he's here, he's waiting on all of us just a, a, a tiny bit of our heart to want him. He'll come in and change your whole life. He'll change everything. Yes, he will. Everything. Whenever, whenever this is on you, Allison, you don't have pain, do you? No, it's not painful at all. You know, <laughs> you know seriously, seriously, Whenever someone sees someone like this that, that, that's manifesting the Spirit of the Lord, they think they're under pain or they're under duress. But it's not like that at all. Tell them what it's like. Well, there's two different kinds with me. Like right now, I think the glory of God is so strong up here, my body just can't really take it. And that, that's why I'm doing this. But there's other times whenever I come into God's presence and um, I don't move at all, but inside me, it's like there's just waves of God inside of me. And then there's other times whenever I'm interceding and it's not painful to my body, but it's painful to my heart because I know that God loves people so much and he's, he's, he's in a hurry. He, he wants, he wants, he wants everyone. He, there's not much, not much more time. And he, he aches and he, he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. <laughs> I 
pray Holy Spirit that you will convict us of the excuses we have made, you will convict us of the lukewarmness, you will convict us of the many things that we have said no to that you have called us into. Forgive us for not knowing your heart, Lord, for us. For not feeling the pain, the desire that you have to see us enter into the fullness that you have for us, Lord. I pray Holy Spirit that you will fill us afresh this morning that you will enable us to make a fresh commitment uh, to make every effort to agonize, to strive, to contend for the things of your kingdom But to make every effort to enter the narrow door and to stay on that narrow path. Or like this like this girl just shared, Lord, we want to be hot for you. I pray for each one of us that we will not waste even one day, Lord. In Jesus' name, I release us once again into His purposes, into His good, pleasing and perfect will, into the operation, the activation of our gifts, the picking up of mantles, the, the stepping into callings. In Jesus' name, I release each one of us into that life of agonizing and striving and training and discipline to be more like Jesus and to please Him in every way. I thank you Lord Jesus for where you are going to take us Lord and what you are going to do in us and through us. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you for your wonderful work. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>